We see them all the time and there's even a chance you've been pulled over by one for going a bit too fast. Yes, everyday police all over the world go about their business of maintaining law and order. Yet not all police are created equal and we're here to show you what we mean with these 10 fascinating officers. Now while we have you pulled over, we'd like to see your license and registration, please. While you're at it, please leave your fingerprint on the subscribe and notification buttons. Your cooperation is appreciated. Zach Ropos too often, police get portrayed as heartless robots who are different than regular people. This can create an us-versus-them mentality and make many people in the public uncomfortable around anyone in uniform. However, anyone who has an officer in the family or is friends with one knows that they are, for the most part, pretty normal people. After all, they are someone's mother, father, sister, or brother. Zach Ropos helped demonstrate this human side to the police quite clearly while out on patrol one day. This Ohio cop noticed a little girl and her lemonade stand on the side of the road. The girl was 9-year-old Gabrielle Garcar, and she started her lemonade stand in order to buy an iPad for school and games. Admiring her spirit and ability to work for what she wanted, Officer Ropos wanted to reward the little girl, so he went home to see if his old iPad worked well enough to give it to her. Unfortunately, it didn't. Not put off, Ropos went that one step further and purchased Garcar her very own new tablet. This story of kindness was spread on social media, and Officer Ropos admitted he was surprised by how much attention it actually received. Matias Pereira Many who have served in the military end up finding their way into law enforcement. Matias Ferreira is a perfect example of this. However, Ferreira's story does have one significant difference. You see, after he moved to the U.S. from Uruguay, Ferreira had dreamed of being a Marine. He achieved that goal and was sent to Afghanistan in 2010. Just months into his service there, an IED exploded, injuring him severely. After operations to save his life, Ferreira's legs were amputated, effectively ending his military career. Back in civilian life, he did not let his disability limit him. He learned to walk and run again in around three months. He even stopped to save a child from a car crash while on the way to his own wedding. Still looking for a way to serve the community, he enrolled in the police academy and ended up joining a local force in New York State. All through his training, he insisted on being held to the same standard as every other recruit. All of this hard work paid off, and Ferreira successfully made it through training. In fact, he's the department's first double amputee on active service. Don Brown Imagine being a rookie cop fresh on the job, and one of your first encounters is with a group of armed IRA members. Most of us would run the other way and not look back until we were well out of danger. In the 1970s, many of Britain's big cities were under the threat of violence from the Irish Republican Army. Shootings and bombings were regular occurrences, and it likely took someone with a lot of guts to want to be a police officer. Among all of this, Don Brown was a fresh-faced 21-year-old constable just looking to enforce the law. One night, he and a colleague were driving in Manchester when they received reports of three armed men shooting up a restaurant. After shooting up a police car and injuring an inspector, they hid behind the wall in a churchyard. This is right where Don Brown found them. With no body armor and only a small wooden baton, Brown leapt the wall and tackled one of the IRA members. The other two, clearly shocked by this act of insanity, ran away. Brown was later awarded for his bravery, and considering the guy he captured had a record for murder among other nasty things, we think he definitely deserved it. Close Quarters Police officers are just regular people. However, the nature of their job and the type of training they receive means that they can charge headlong into situations that would have the rest of us wetting our pants. With the adrenaline flowing and training kicking in, police officers have shown repeatedly that they can endure situations and injuries that would leave other people completely incapacitated. Deputy Jennifer Fulford Salvano is a perfect example of this. Three years with the Orange County Sheriff's Office had given her much needed experience, but nothing could really prepare her for a call she got back in 2004. Responding to a suspicious 911 call, Fulford Salvano arrived at a house where it was believed armed men were inside. However, there were also children inside, and no one knew where they were. Seeing an open garage door, she entered intent on finding the kids. At that moment, two armed men emerged from inside. Trapped between the house and a van, Fulford Salvano entered into a gunfight with the two. When she was shot in her right shoulder, she switched arms for firing her gun. Under a minute later, both men were neutralized. It was then that Fulford Salvano realized she had been shot ten times. Incredibly, she must be part Terminator because Fulford Salvano was back at work just 38 days later. Kevin Phillippe 
Imagine failing an entry exam or interview for a job with the end result that you actually get promoted. Sound impossible? Well, the French police officer Kevin Philippi is anything to go by, it could totally happen. You see, in 2016, Philippi was a probationary officer in Paris. The 28-year-old was working as part of a police presence to control a large protest of far-left activists. Of course, in such situations, the police always make a tempting target and Officer Philippi found this out. While driving down the street in a police car, Philippi's car was attacked by a group of protesters. The rear window was smashed out and a flare was thrown in which started the car on fire. Footage showed that Philippi stopped the car and got out to investigate when another protester set upon him with a metal pole. Channeling his inner Bruce Lee, Philippi blocked and avoided the attempted strikes by the protester. Despite having a gun, he kept his cool, staring down his attacker before walking away. Incredibly, no one was killed in the exchange, which impressed authorities so much that they felt it was right to promote Philippi, despite the fact he actually had just failed an exam. Time for our law enforcement quiz! Every city in the US has its own police force. Do you know which city currently has the largest number of uniformed police officers serving? We'll give you the answer at the end of this video. EM on. Sometimes getting together a good squad of police officers is all about having that perfect chemistry. Well, in Kyoto, we guess it's more about having a perfect chemistry. Move over, police dogs, and say Hello Kitty because this force now has Officer Iamon. This cat, whose name refers to a gate guardian in Japanese, was picked up off the streets and given a home by the police. Not done there, the force made Iamon a little uniform which he wears when he's on duty. That's right, he clocks in and out just like any regular police officer. Given the fact he'd likely knock everything off his desk, we don't think he has his own desk. So what would a police force need a cat for? No, Kyoto doesn't have a problem with illegal mouse gangs. Instead, Iamon is brought in to help a situation after a crime. Police officers find that victims can be pretty shaken up and anxious after being involved in a situation. Iamon is used to help calm victims down and soothe people who have just been in a stressful situation. Hugo Martinez he may be retired today, but in the early 1990s, Hugo Martinez was probably the most famous police officer in the world. That's because at this time, Martinez held the rank of colonel and was in charge of a police organization known as Search Block. This organization was made up of specially selected police officers with the sole responsibility of tracking down drug lord Pablo Escobar. Now, we don't have enough time to get into all of Escobar's illegal activities, but it should suffice to say that he was the most wanted man in the world at that time. His story also spawned the Netflix hit Narcos. In any event, Martinez was head cop when it came to tracking the drug lord down and things got really bad. Escobar did everything to try and get rid of Martinez. He paid assassins to try and kill him. This included a cook who poisoned his food. There were attempts at bribery and even bombings of cars and buildings that Escobar thought Martinez would use. The drug lord even personally threatened Martinez, informing him he would take out his entire family. Now, most of this would and did scare off other police officers, yet Martinez stayed true to the end and was there when Escobar was finally taken care of once and for all. Human Cushion Police are often involved in negotiating with people who are on the verge of committing suicide. After all, odds are you've seen at least one news story of a policeman trying to talk to and calm someone on the edge of a building or bridge. Officer Liang Xiao encountered this scenario one day while on patrol in Beihai, China. Down one city street, Liang looked up and saw an unnamed man standing up on the fourth floor of a building. Police believe the man was hallucinating from drugs and they desperately tried to talk him down. Unfortunately, nothing they said was working. Then, suddenly, the man lunged forward and fell. Now, we bet most people would freeze up in such situations and watch as this man simply fell to his demise. Not Liang, however. Without a second thought, the police officer lunged forward, throwing his body between the falling man and the hard pavement in an effort to catch him. Incredibly, the act saved the life of the jumper, who was shown to be dazed and confused in the moments after the fall. Liang, with a broken foot and bruises, was treated afterwards and hopefully given some sort of award or medal for his incredible bravery. Officer Guns for a lot of cops, being one of New York's finest is a real badge of honor. Officer Michael Cunahan is definitely one of the city's finest, perhaps in more than one way. You see, Cunahan is a real fitness freak. He actually gained a bit of fame when he started an Instagram account to dispel the myth that all cops were pudgy, donut-eating pencil pushers. So how did he prove that? Well, he simply took off his shirt. Whether you're a criminal or simply an admirer, you can see that this cop stands out from the rest. 
Cunahan makes sure he talks to people on the street to dispel negative stereotypes and he's in touch with others on social media as a way to spread advice on healthy living. Of course, he works out a lot, but even in the gym, he is on the job, as proven by the time he saves someone having a heart attack. On the beat, we can't see anyone wanting to mess with someone whose arms are that big. Unfortunately, ladies, Officer Cunahan has a girlfriend, and as a fitness instructor, we think she's in pretty good shape herself. Hot Fuzz we here at The Richest are all about equality. As a result, since we've just shown you one rather jacked male police officer, we need to give the ladies the floor. Indeed, if looks could stop criminals in their tracks, we're betting that the female officers of the Mexican and German police forces would lead the way. First, there's Cristina Navarez Mesa. As a traffic cop, Cristina likely has little trouble getting the cars to stop when she commands them to. In fact, the rest of the female force in the Mexican city of Culiacan have us convinced that this is one location that might be worth visiting. But should we do that before or after we travel to Germany? That's because this country is home to another unbelievable cop named Adrian Colazar. The 30-something cop has turned a lot of heads over the last few years and it's not just because she looks good in a uniform. Colazar has quite the online presence and posts a lot of pictures of herself. It all has many online admirers admitting their guilt. The pictures aren't a shallow attempt to simply get likes either. You see, Colazar is actually a bodybuilder who competes. These images are a way to advertise her progress and, as she says, show other women a healthy body image. So, do you know which American city has the largest police force? The answer is New York. Yes, the Big Apple has around 35,000 men and women in uniform doing everything from directing traffic to investigating major crimes. Well, the officers here at the richest police department didn't find anything incriminating, so you are free to go. We suggest, however, that you view at least a couple more of our crime and police-related videos because they can be pretty entertaining. After collecting your personal belongings, head for the exit and be sure to hit that red subscribe button so we have you in the system, just in case we cross paths again. See you next time!